Hi, everybody. Welcome to the card shop. After a nice six month hiatus, I'm here. I'm the big dog, and I'm here as always with my co host, the indomitable Mike Fruitman, owner of Mike Stadium Sports Cards and host of the wildly popular Singles Night. Um, check local <laughs> listings and YouTube for uh, the next show. Hey, Mike. So, you know, fortunately in the hobby, you know, nothing really was going on the last six months. So we didn't have a lot to talk about. You know, it's other than, you know, Golden setting record auctions uh, for for cards and other memorabilia. Fanatics buying every license for the NFL, Major League Baseball, and the NBA. Essentially um, putting a death knell into Tops and Panini as we currently know them. Right. Um, you know, we've got the National 2021 Nationals was the second most attended ever. And the first day had saw over 10,000 people, um, which was a record. Um, you know, Beckett and PSA are slowly digging themselves out of a massive graded uh, card grading hole. You know, PSA is purported to be grading 40,000 cards a day, and which was to be over a million a month. You know, uh, we had an NFL draft class that that could be comparable to that 2018 class in terms of quarterbacks and talent uh, yet to be seen, although they're all having their growing pains. And it, it, and it could also be yeah. comparable to the 2006 draft with the, yeah. <laughs> the best draft ever. The yeah, Leonard exactly. Bushing Young. Sorry. I know. And we I will know see. That. We will see. And then the and an NBA draft class that has a lot of potential to it, but is starting out, you know, at a, at a moderate, moderate, modest stage. Um, you know, other than that, you know, nothing's really been going on in the hobby. Um, I know you also spent time in the summit and I know this fanatics thing is something I really need to hear from you about with regard to what you think it's going to do from shop owners, because they have been fanatics has been very straightforward saying they want to expand the direct to customer facet of the business. So I'm real curious, a just, you know, what's the going on has been for you. And then we can dive into that kind of stuff. Sure. Well, I mean, to, to start off with, the shop is still jamming. We're still, um, we're not where we were last fall when we were the only game in town. Literally, I mean, there there was minimal games, um, and, and you 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 know, there was there was weird. You couldn't go to them. Uh, you you literally couldn't go to them. I could. Um, sorry, jerk move. Um, but but we're <laughs> it's still it's still solid. We're still uh, every day is still exciting at the shop. We've we've elevated over the last year the the base of collecting. Uh, we maintained most, not every one of our uh, previous collectors, and we've had just such a steady influx since. And uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is the amount of kids that have gotten in the hobby. We have an active kids club. Um, the manufacturers are solid about assisting with that as well. Panini more recently making kid crates, tops with their tops of the class program, uh, Upper Deck National Hockey Card Day, uh, Leaf, not so much. But that's okay. Maybe one day they'll they'll change things. I haven't, I haven't put the nails to uh, to Brian about that yet, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm sure Brian's in his heyday right now, given the fanatics thing, because you know he's been operating without a license for years. And you know, if Panini and Tops want to stick around, they probably should go to school with him. But you know, we'll we'll get into that. It's you're spot on. I mean, the, the shop is just still still crushing it. It's still a ton of fun at the shop. Um, I, had, I had a crazy day this week. We did. <coughs> excuse me, you know, the normal eight hour shift, 10 to six. And at 601, we hosted uh, Denver Bronco offensive light lineman, Dalton Reisner. So we had that going on from six to seven 30 and wanted to stretch it out. I mean, I would have done that the whole day. Um, you know, w- one of those autograph guests I really wanted to have, uh, he's an offensive lineman, so it's not the big sexy position, but still he was, he was an incredible, um, incredible person. Like he gets to the door, he, he parks, I see him walking up. It's clearly him. Uh, either that or we just, you know, naturally draw 300 pounds, <laughs> six foot six guys yeah. with all sorts of ink on his arms. And, and instead of walking up to the store, he, he walks down the way. I'm sorry, I'm looking out the window at where it was. And uh, he walks down the way and he literally starts knuckle bumping everybody coming in uh, before they come inside, which is the coolest thing. I thought he yeah. like overshot the door. He was going to the nail salon or something. But uh, just a great guy like that. So we, uh, we do that. Uh, I go next door. I grab some fun and I'm back online from a nine until 11 o'clock. I, I only do two hours. I'm one of those wimpy card shop owners, but uh, right. only do two hours of going live and, and uh, doing, you call it tonight. We're back at it with, with singles night. Um, so yeah, I should clarify. So I, I know by the time you're watching this, you, you won't be able to be part of tonight's show, but we do go live once a week. I spend about five hours a week pricing single cards. It's my, 
It's my chill. Uh, I, I wait till the family's asleep. I wait till I can watch horrible, horrible TV shows from the 80s and 90s. And, and I have to, all right, overspeak, but I have to watch TV shows that I don't have to watch because if I'm looking at a card, my glasses are off. I, I can't do it on my couch because my couch has this incredible innate ability to drive me to go to sleep really quickly. <laughs> and so I have to sit at the kitchen table, which is 20 feet away from the big screen in the other room. And I have to do it without my glasses on. So if I'm watching something I haven't seen before, I'll have to like something crazy will happen. I'll have to stop, put on my glasses, rewind, watch the scene. Sorry, again, overspeak. But, but that's what I do to, to get ready for singles night. And we go live on the shop's Facebook and YouTube channel for about two to three hours. And, you know, put a card up. It's already priced and it's a, a race to see who wants the card more than anybody else. Sorry. So there you go for singles night. Um, and, and seemingly everything we're doing right now is still solid. It takes a little bit longer to fill breaks or not snap fills, as the industry likes to say. we got to work on it a little bit harder. But we're still seeing tremendous interest at the shop. Um, the, the likes I, I was I would have been happy with elated with two or three four years ago yeah yeah i you know it's funny you mentioned breaks being harder to fill i can tell you just you know i as someone who had has the wherewithal to buy a product no matter how expensive it is you know it it the last couple of years have transformed the industry into into almost um it's not reachable by me i'm like i won't even take risks on that stuff because there's just not there's no juice left at the prices we're seeing. So breaks, you know, unfortunately, breaks are now pricing up. And I think people are starting to realize, A, the free money's gone. So there's, they don't, you know, all that money that was coming in during the pandemic is going away. And some people use that as a slush fund. But, the, and that, I think a lot of those people jumped into breaks. But man, it's, it's, um, and, you know, quite honestly, right now, the, the cupboard's bare when it comes to products. I mean, it's, it's there. But, you know, you know, the the new draft class, you know, it's always Johnny come lately in this industry and the new draft class and football's out. But we're still only getting collegiate in the in the the lower end um, um, NFL products for them. This basketball class is early days. I mean, we're still seeing 2021, um, 20, 2020, 2021 um, products coming out for a class that's been fairly underwhelming absent a couple people. So I think there's it's the classic time confusion game that goes on and i think people don't know what to do and where to go i'm sure that you know, there's buying opportunities out there but i'm curious to you you know how's what's the wax direction i know you send a, you do a sports collectors daily um update you send out but you know what are you seeing from the from the heat map about what wax is really moving um one of the things we're actually seeing lately is a lot of our non-traditional assets are, are, are being more appreciated. Um, Pokemon is enjoying its 25th celebration. And so here it is. I put together my hot list. And uh, number one was the 25th anniversary celebrations products. Uh, they spaced it out where uh, there were two straight weeks on Fridays where we had new releases popping out. One of them was ETBs, Elite Trainer Boxes. And the other one was like an ultra premium set. And the response to each was so overwhelming that for the first time, I think ever a, uh, a gaming product was number one on my hot list. Wow. Uh, my, my editor was like, wait a second, you, are you getting some of that Colorado special herb out there? And I'm thinking, no, yeah. I mean, that's, that is what's rolling. Um, Leaf, um, it came out with a mixed sport premium collection that went over very well. Um, not a, not a, you know, it's still sports related. Jeez. We had one card. It was a triple autograph. It was Larry Bird, Kevin Garnett, and Giannis. Um, just, just a monster triple signed card. Uh, we're also seeing tremendous interest uh, lately in um, a lot a, a other gaming. So Magic Gathering has still been very strong for us, um, which is which is encouraging. Uh, as we're you know we'll get into the giant F word here in a, in a little bit, but um, I think it's it's an interesting time for shops. Uh, there's they're still celebrating and enjoyment out of go out of things these days, but it's encouraging to see other facets of the shop um, pulling their weight as well. Uh, wrestling UFC. Um, a lot of the non-traditional assets that we sell here are, are definitely getting a lot of excitement. Um, you, you brought up an interesting thing in terms of product delays, and we've really been affected by it, uh, even though it's still solid at the shop. <clears throat> what we've really missed this year, and I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I think Panini would have had these products out if they could have, is, and it happens to just be basketball and football really, really stands out, is we didn't have products before the draft in either right. basketball and football. And part of it is, I mean, leading up to the NFL draft, if you're watching ESPN, it's, 
you know, three weeks out, two weeks out, one week out, you're yeah. just seeing the steady climb of, of focusing on the NFL draft. And if you've got products that are out before, I mean, I, I loved it. We'd have so many collectors who would buy a product a month before the draft, hold on to it, and, and then literally make those cards available so that they closed uh, that Thursday night, the Friday night of, of the NFL right. draft. We didn't have that this year. <clears throat> and it's an opportunity, obviously, for the folks who enjoy those players in college to get in on those cards a little bit early. And also for people to speculate a little bit and say, wait a second, I, I think this guy's going to go to the Packers. They're going to go to a, uh, the 49ers, the Steelers, more more so collectible teams. And to get in on those cards and then the night of to have those cards, you know, just really pushes somebody in Jacksonville just goes crazy and buys a Lawrence card for whatever it goes for. Right. So going into the season, not only did we not have those products available to sell, but we missed the hype machine that goes with those products. So when you've got a Trevor Lawrence selling for $800, $900, whatever it is on draft night, that's something that you see carry over into the season. I think back to 2002 and Jeremy Shockey from the Giants just, and it was a preseason game, just plowed this guy into the ground. And I'm thinking, yeah. wow. And, and it's a throwaway game, but in the same regard, his hype machine before the season got going. And that happens much the same way now when um, you, you, you don't see cards of Cade going into the season where there's more hype. He hasn't yeah. played a game. I guess he's supposed to play tomorrow night on Halloween. It's supposed to be his debut right. game for the Pistons. But if he had cards out already um, that were selling for so much money, that 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 leads into the season. Uh, I was actually on a Panini conference call the other day, and they, you know, we didn't get into the why things were happening. Um, it wasn't one of those types of calls. But the first um, standard NBA product, I believe, is coming at well, it's Hoops, for the 21-22 product and that's supposed to be out incredibly late December I think the 29th 30th or it's not the 31st but incredibly late this year right. um and I'm not sure whether it's asset acquisition I'm not sure if it's printing time I'm not sure if it's right. a paper problem I mean there's a right. there's a paper shortage right not, and you, as you know, you know that Panini has historically been no, you know one of their not notoriety points is around the number of redemptions they have and I know you know they they get a lot of complaints to the point where the Better Business Bureau now has them as a um, a, a caution or whatever the the rating is because of the level of this stuff that's going on. So it's it can be frustrating. And you know if I'm them, you know you, it's a double edged sword, right? Either people are complaining because the product's not out, or they're complaining about what's in the product that's out. And I'm not sure how you ever win, but I can tell you that in a few years it ain't going to matter. <laughs> to to be so. determined. There's yeah, a, exactly. we, we, we don't, we don't know. We, we, yeah. there's all sorts of insights. There's, I have a, I, I don't know the amount of collectors we have at the shop, but I have every single one of them has a tremendous opinion and they're not wrong yet about what's going to be happening. Are we, are we dry? Are we just going right for the F right now? Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I just don't, I don't think, you know, if, if the way I look at this stuff and again, let's just, let's just, you know, beat up the cat cow oh one other thing you know that you know went on or has gone on is you know collegiate players can now do what they want and so that ha probably has brian gray doing a touchdown dance in the end zone but at the same time um you know there th that dynamic gets real complicated when a guy signs a deal if there's deals done with some card group for you know a three-year deal with a college quarterback you know how does that play with the with the professional licensing that goes on, I'm sure they can probably still do it. Brian's a pro at that without the, you know, jerseys, et cetera, but it's an interesting dynamic that now is going to play out uh, on top of everything else. Um, you know, and, and then I guess, you know, I, I think we, you know, you probably had a lot of conversations at the summit about, you know, how this deal is going to affect the industry. And I'm just curious, you know, I, I see how you guys all as shop owners have to deal with the shortage of cards you've seen where, you know, you're buying retail boxes, et cetera. And it, it seems strange, but it seems like what's, what might end up happening is we might end up having um, people, individuals, the consumers be the secondary market for the shops. So, you know, it, depending upon how this all plays out, but I'm, I'm real curious what the speculation is in the industry from your, from the, the card shop owner about how they think this is going to play out. Are, are you talking about fanatics or just the hobby in general? I would talk. I, I I can't differentiate the two when it comes to basketball, baseball, and football. So I'm curious about that because that'll define a lot of things. Going up with one point you brought up, we in the last year we really shifted our mindset 
I, I first off, I do not go to Target and Walmart, and I do not yep. buy product there. Understood. Everything you see on my shelf is either provided me from a distributor or sub distributor, or from somebody who walks in the door. So yep. uh, we have a lot of people come in and they go, "Oh, you know, you bought this for twenty, and now you're at this price." And and I didn't buy it from Target and Walmart. I don't. <laughs> I don't have right. the time to sit there. I don't. Right. I'm not going to put tracers on uh, yeah. suppliers' cars and figure out where they well, are. Well, Mike, you also don't. You know, you also don't ask somebody where they got a single. <clears throat> if they got a single and they paid a dollar to some person who didn't know any better, and you pay a hundred dollars for it, you're not judging them. I like. I have a car shop owner's got to do what they got to do, and it's not your job to go. You know, police the the intents of people going in and buying these products in the stores, and you know how this works for a capitalist economy. Target and those guys are sorting that out themselves. And, sure. you know, you can't make a meal out of it anymore. And that was probably a good thing because ultimately the kids are in the future of this thing. And we have to let them have a chance to access this stuff. I, I agree with you. And we're, we're trying to keep things as affordably as possible. When yeah. somebody brings in um, wax, we are trying to pay, obviously, a fair amount to them. But my most important consideration is what am I going to be able to go to public at? Is it at eBay rates? Is it below? Is it higher? And if it's higher, we're saying no to deals that are coming in where it's just good for the seller. I'm not going to hey, put Mike, your sound show. has gotten real funky. Oh, um, you're you're in a very deep PVC pipe tunnel. <laughs> is this any better? No, you sound like Max Headroom. <laughs> Should we pause it for a second? Yeah, give me one second. I want to pause yeah. just for a second. All right. All right, we're back. The sound has been repaired on the Fruitman card shop side of the business. So, um, Mike, please carry on. So when we're buying retail, we want to make sure that we're pricing it in line for people. And it's tough to do, but we're actually saying no to a lot of folks right now. Uh, it, when you're buying from Target and Walmart, as I understand it, they've raised their pricing. Yeah. So it's it squeezed those guys a little bit. And we had a guy the other day, he goes, well, I'm only making $5 a box. And I'm like, well, I'm going to only make three and I've got to absorb credit card charges at the rate you're charging me. So... Um, it's tough to do. I hate saying no. It's a word I don't like. My yeah. wife is good at it, but uh, <laughs> she's, she, no, no, you can't have this. No, you can't buy that. Yes. Um, so, um, but, but I hate doing it. And, and we're just, we unfortunately doing it more as people are coming up with us. And, and, you know, somebody the other day wanted more than it was selling for on eBay before, before fees. And I'm like, I, I'm sorry, let's just stop. This isn't going to happen. Thank you for your time. I'm going to go focus on something else. So yeah. um, that, buying retail has, has become, I'm still, I mean, I guess I've gotten used to it, but it was something two years ago I never would have considered. I didn't want retail right. on my shelves. Um, right. It was a subpar quality compared to what we offer in terms of hobby releases. Um, and it was, you know, good. It, and it was good for kids at Target. You know, mom, dad, it's 20 bucks. Thanks so much. Um, so we, we've definitely made that a, a bigger, or, oh, geez. I, now I want to add up everything I spent in the last year because I also yeah. have to, uh, we, the city of Aurora has now referred to me as a pawn shop. So every time I buy something, I have to put it on leads online. So I've got, it's very traceable to see what's walked in. I know the other day we cracked the 400 person barrier uh, in, a, in a really short amount of time. So quick, quick aside there. Um, but we, we are using that as a way to stock the store. We're also using the Panini Kids Crate. It's a, it's a great crate uh, filled with awesome product. There's a two football related products. There's a soccer related release, and there's some cool little panini uh, chotskis in there that that are great for kids. And it's a box we're able to offer for fifty nine dollars. There's a new uh, wave that's coming out soon uh, with different products. So we we just went crazy on those. We overstocked like crazy on those. Right. Just to have somebody comes in here, um, you know, they want to pick up something for the kiddo this holiday season. We're gonna have some great fifty nine dollar options. I'm not pitching them, but I'm just making yeah. sure that you know it, it's part of the call where. You know, we are we are focusing on not just carrying absolute that came out last week at 519, 529, but we want to make yeah. sure that, you know, we, we have options for kids. And we, it's funny, we get so many adults who are like, hey, I need one for my kid. I'm like, you have never once mentioned you have a kid. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, Mike, I'm spitballing with you right now, but I will tell you that um, if you're up for doing it, you know, reaching out to Panini, figuring out these boxes, I will go in with you to get, you know, 50, 100 of them that we donate to children's hospitals or stuff like that, I'd be glad to do it with you. Cause you know, that's, that's a big deal. And I'm sure Panini gets it. And that would be something they play. Cause you got kids coming into the shop. You also got kids that, you know, can't afford and otherwise can't access even at $59. And I think giving them the opportunity to just enjoy this, like other people do would be a big gift. So and this is I'm in. in the moment, but I'm in. 
No, I love the idea. Uh, I think they come in eight count boxes. I'm in for a yep. case. Um, I think I just put in for six or eight. I think it was eight of them. So yep. I'm in for a case. Absolutely. Let's do something like that. Yeah, I'll figure something out. I'll let me, I got connections that can help us like children's hospital, et cetera, and do some of that. Perfect. Okay. Well, that's a go. All right. See, we're changing the world here. We're making the world. We're a good place. people. Damn it. <laughs> Speaking of good people. Hey, have you celebrated the, the guys at sports card radios uh, card shop opening? Oh, that's right. It hasn't. And it never will. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're doing things. I saw that they, uh, I, I hope they had a great time in Vegas. One of my, one of my collectors went out, there was a <clears throat> card show recently in Vegas and yeah. uh, he was sharing how, he went to tables and hey, where are you from, Colorado? Oh, do you know Mike? Do you know Mike? Do you know Mike? Do you know Mike? And he's like, wow, you know, like when, when you say you're from Colorado, you're you're the shop that everybody mentions. And he goes, yeah, but I went by one table. I said I was from Colorado, but they they kind of got a little quiet. And they they didn't. I said, oh, I, <laughs> I I didn't pull up pictures, but I I, I had a guess who, who it could yeah. have been. So it's okay. Well, it's, it's interesting. I am um, I have a you know I'm I have a lot of Com C volume that I do and. I have a pretty high up relationship guy that I talked to. And he said he was at a, a show in Dallas and that somehow my name came up in a conversation with other guys. Cause they were talking about something else. And they said, Oh, that guy's probably pretty janky because you know, he's got a profile on, on their site. Right. I'm like, what, 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 how'd the conversation go? He goes, well, I asked him, I said, well, is there anything with the, with the profile? I said, no, it's just a picture and a, and a couple words. I'm like, so okay and so they talked through it and sorted it out and you know I, he made sure they understood that many of us you and i included consider that kind of thing a badge of honor and that oh, was yeah. the kind of criticism is like that's that's great so it's just interesting the perspectives people have around but you know I, I always take people by the talk and the walk and i've heard a lot of talk but i don't see any walk and we probably just gave them two more minutes than they've earned on on our discussion so um it, it is fun game. living it is fun living rent free there in their minds. <laughs> well, we just paid a little rent in the last couple of minutes, so such is life. Um, All right. Anyways, so let's 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 slay the sacred cow. The you know the um, the fanatics thing. You know, as we said earlier, you know they have a high target on direct to consumer. They have given twenty percent of that company to the players and the leagues, which is incredibly high. I think from a quality of product and accessibility standpoint, that's probably a great thing because these players and everyone have a vested interest. I'm a little curious how that plays out between what I consider to be money good. Cause I'm sure Panini and tops go through hell trying to get players to sign and everything else. Once the check clears at right. the same time, it's enough money that they probably have the ability to make it pretty effective. Um, so I think from a quality and accessibility of product, that's probably a great thing. Um, I think, you know, they got to figure out how to make the damn card. So I'm guessing one of these big companies is going to get bought or their, their, you know, Panini was out trying to build their own, you know, set up their own, um, production. So maybe that's a play for them, but I I'm real curious how this direct consumer is going to play with the shops and what you heard at the, um, at the summit about it. Um, right now, the, the biggest thing is it's, it's mostly radio silence. Uh, I've got a friend. Mm. So I, I backtrack. I, I, I was hired by a company to do security and run three concerts that the Foo Fighters played in Alaska. And I was yeah. sitting at, oh, God, I want to get this right. The pub in, in Anchorage. I, I, God, I hope I didn't screw up the name. Um, but uh, oh, Club Paris. There you go. Club Paris. It was 11 in the morning. I was sitting with my buddy Pat Moe from Bosco's. And uh, I got this text. And it was a link to an article stating that fanatics right before tops um did their spac oh um on, on the stock market um that fanatics had wrestled away the uh, the baseball licenses and right. I, I showed the phone to pat and i'm thinking all right let's let's understand what happened here and uh it was jaw agape it was yep. you know we're like what's going on here the the rem song it's the end of the world as we know it was humming yep. through my ears and you know we were still trying to figure out what's going on and okay, so it's 2026. So we've got 22, three, four, five. Okay, that's that's yeah. plenty of time to work with things. And then it's like, okay, so what's going to happen next? And the first thought I had regarding Fanatics was Windcraft and other companies that they that used to provide a service where um, they would um, stock stores with uh -huh. apparel and other items that, when Fanatics took that market over, 
uh, basically eliminated. And I, I hope I'm getting this right. I, I don't want to misspeak here, but but it was like, okay, so wait a second. This is a company that, at least history-wise, has shown that they want to go um, from alpha to zeta. They want to have it alpha to omega. Sorry, they they want to have it from beginning to end. They want to market it, and they want to get Kevin Harlan to speak about it during every single commercial break. And yeah. um, it's going to be a very visible thing. And which way is it going to go? And we still don't know. We're still at that. We're still at that time in the jaws where you've seen a fin. You've seen somebody get dragged underwater and, you know, you're like, wait a second. So something big is out there and what's going to happen. And, you know, at the end, is it going to be a large plastic shark that we kind of <laughs> laugh at? You're like or, Chris Paul in the State Farm commercials and you hear the music. That's it. <laughs> Something's going about to go down. Something's about to go down. <laughs> I got a buddy who, who works at Fanatics and I messaged him. And normally I'm a next day response. I think it took six days for him to get back to me. And we were having a great conversation until it came time to refer to talking to cards. And at that point, it was radio silence. Yeah. Um, and it's a combination of, I'm guessing, they're not speaking. They're told not to speak. Um, they don't know exactly what to say. They don't want to mislead. And, and these days, you can say one thing to one person, and thanks to Twitter or, or podcasts, uh, at least with podcasts, we're going to get like 46 people who will hear about this. But <laughs> but on Twitter, that can be retweeted, and, and untold thousands find out about it. And any rumor these days is getting immediate credence. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, I've got collectors who are coming in and go, so what, what are you going to do in 2026 when you close? And I'm thinking, oh, like for retirement, got it. I understand. It's nice of you to care. Um, but we don't we don't know. Are they going to partner with shops yeah. at some level? Are they going to partner shops minimally? Um, you know, what's going to happen to distributors? And I think that handwriting is more on the wall than it is for hobby shops. Uh, it, yeah, it, I, would I would not. so. I, I wouldn't mind being a distributor the next four years. It seems like actually a pretty good game to be at. Yeah. Um, however, um, beyond that, I think there's more question marks. And the distributors are, are more diversified. It's not just sports cards. And uh, most recently, Upper Deck extended their license yeah. to, with hockey. And yeah. the immediate speculation was, wow, I think Fanatics, uh, other people, sorry, not myself, Fanatics let that one slide so they wouldn't be considered a monopoly. You know, there's the facet of shipping to Canada, which I'm sure they have no problem doing. Um, but, but, but that's an interesting one. Like, I'm, I'm sure Fanatics cared. I'm sure mm -hmm. that, I can't imagine they're like, oh, oh, my God, we forgot. We forgot to put in a bid for hockey. Such idiots we are. Yeah. So, you know, at least we'll be able to sell hockey, if not the other three. So I, I don't have a guess as to what's going to happen. It would be my hope that Fanatics sees value in partnering with hobby shops at some level. Uh, my expectation is I'm not going to have to do more with less. I'm going to have to do as much with as much as I'm able to receive. Um, I don't expect at that point to have distributors working with me the same way we are now. I'm not saying that we won't get any product at the shop level from distributors, but if we're seeing some, I certainly expect that number to be affected. You know, here you've got Fanatics going from, are the numbers, it was 20 million with Tops to 200 million with, right. with Fanatics. If right. that's the case, I mean, that, that 180 million has to come out of somewhere and not just 180 million, more than 180 million. God, right. I, that, that number is so ludicrous so many years ago in this industry um what, what 10 60, million over 60 what, right i'm sorry they've had, they've had over 60 years as the exclusive or almost right. 70 over 70 almost 70 right yeah and it's such yeah. a you know collectors i've got guys who you know, they're kind of on the way out they've been collecting for a very right. long time but i've got some guys who've been collecting tops for 50 years and their concern is, well, now what's going to happen? And I can't right. answer that question. It's an awkward, it's an awkward thing. Yeah. Does Fanatics buy tops? And we continue to see everything done the same way. Right. Does tops, um, it, does Fanatics um, effectively license tops? And we don't see the same changes other than where product goes. Uh, we had mm -hmm. something happen this week in the industry where um, tops, and it's it's I, I heard it from a distributor, uh, no, no rebuttal has come out. But um, Tops dropped four distributors this week. Uh, they dropped Diamond Collectibles, a comic distributor, uh, Sweet mm -hmm. Deal Magazine Exchange, and um, Hamps. Um, apparently, after all currently ordered products are coming out, so perhaps uh, April, May, June next year, mm -hmm. we're going to see those companies not carrying Tops products, or at least not uh, directly. They may get them through right. other distributors and sub-distributors. Um, and that's an, that's an interesting move. And now we're all like, okay, okay so what does, does this mean? Does this mean that, you know, the other distributors are now going to have more product? They're consolidating. Maybe it's easier to ship 
to those who remain instead of spreading it all out? Um, does this mean Tops is going to be selling more of their own product online instead of right. taking 10 points off what they sell it to hobby shops for right. getting the full market value? I mean, right. not every single product from Tops sells out immediately. But in, but I would imagine if you look through most of the releases from this year, most, if not all, will be sold out. So does this mean a reallocation to that? And again, not giving up 10 points, but but making so much more over what they sell to hobby shops yeah. for. Does it mean they're going to sell more to hobby shops? Yeah. I, I, I don't have, that's not my, my first thought. So um, we're, we're seeing steps, we're seeing small steps that to a lot of people may be unnoticed, but would this have happened if it wasn't for the Fanatics deal? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. So let me, let me pose a business economic side to this and just give you some thoughts that I think could, could let you uh, roll around with a little bit. So I think if you're, if you're fanatics, I think, A, I don't think they know. And I think the, the, the phrase, I don't know over the last two years has been so heavily underutilized that I don't think it's unreasonable to use it in the right perspective. None of us know. I will tell you, Fanatics probably doesn't know beyond what I think the vision and strategy piece is, how they're actually going to do this stuff. I think everything you've mentioned, do I think they could potentially just buy the brand Panini, buy the brand tops or the card brands from them to provide some kind of a monetary value to keep continuity in the industry? Of course, if, if National Treasures goes away, they're going to struggle trying to create something else as being the quote, National Treasures of the new play. So I think those brands have massive value and, and that has to be an asset that somehow gets transferred. So whether it's by buying the big brand and using the smalls or it's buying the smalls, that's going to have to happen somehow. Um, separately, if you're, if you're fanatics, you know, I know online is a big presence and I know they're going to drive online as being the show that we know that because it's lower overhead, they can control the price better, but there is a very big value and an, an effect to what, a card shop has to them. It's it's a some people want to touch and feel, and the only way to do that there's a reason a Nordstrom's is still open even though everyone buys their Christmas online. You've got to be able to get in. So what I'm curious about with that is do they co do they take the what I'd call the Louis Vuitton model where they say hey we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take over the National Treasures brand, but card shops you have access, but you're gonna be buying it for fifteen hundred dollars a box and you have to sell it for $24.99.95 a box. And your terms and conditions are such that that's the price you have to sell it for. And what you'll probably see is online, they'll probably sell it for $24.99.95 or something like that and create a consolidated view of the price. And then it'll be about whether the shops have enough juice in this that it's worth keeping going or not. They're going to have to have card shop presence. And I think there'll be a shakeout, like the sketchy guys will probably get run. So I think that that's going to have to be what happens. Um, there may be fewer shops, but I think the shops that are there will have a decent model to work by. I think the catch will be, you know, how does, how, what does Fanatics look as look at breakers as? Do they look on them as, as card shops or do they look at them as something else? Because the really big breakers, they're going to be in a position where they got to figure out which one they are. And it's an interesting concept because if they have, if they say you can't sell for more than 24 99 95 all of a sudden, when you're breaking, you have to add your labor component to the margin you were making. And all of a sudden, it's not as lucrative. So there's a whole big party to have here. But it feels like that they're going to have to sort that. I think card shops will be around. What they look like, we'll have to figure out. I, I One of the things you brought up is, is something that doesn't get enough discussion. It's, yes, if we're able to buy product, are we going to have those limitations put on us? Right. When, when Oreo sells to Walmart, and obviously, they, they want to be on that shelf. Right. But do they have... Do they say, look, you know, your your three dollar is a thing because that's what we are. We're a three dollar, four, five dollar. I can never run for president because I don't know the price of milk these days. But right, and and, and other reasons. But but you know, are we gonna have <clears throat> are we gonna have those types of limitations placed against us? I, I you know, and, and at that point, I think uh, I think a lot of shops would jump for the opportunity just to be able to maintain. Uh, if we're able to get cases, you know, it, it, if it becomes a jump how high situation. You know, shops will have to determine whether they want to do that or not. For right. the last three, four, five years, more specifically the last year and a half, too, um, we haven't had to work very hard. I brought this up to somebody at the summit. Yeah. Shops have not had to work very hard. And I, I equate it to the beginning of Rocky Three 
we're yeah we're the champion and we've got the belt and it's awesome and we're you know we're doing mall appearances and whatever types of things like that whatever they're doing at the beginning of rocky right. three and you got clubber lang who who isn't see, sleeping in satin sheets and he's up at five in the morning three in the morning, whatever it is and and he's putting his time in the gym and and sure we're, we're we're you know champions by by title right now but but does that get swept away from us um right and there's also <laughs> i talked to somebody the other at the summit and, and the response was i don't care i'm thinking well no it's saying how can you not care and his response is basically, if I got to retire in four years, that's okay. Mm-hmm. And and what he's basically saying is, look, I'm in a good enough position right now where if, if I had to retire, I, I would be just fine with that. That's okay. Yeah. And it was, it was really weird to see somebody say that because, I, I mean, I'm a lifer in this industry. This is this yeah. is what I'm doing today. It's what I'm doing tomorrow. Yeah. It's what I'm doing for the foreseeable future. I don't have a, an exit plan. It's not like, well, geez, you know, this, this is going to be great. And, I won't have to show up at my card shop anymore. This would be awesome one day. Uh, I'm not, I don't have that sentiment. I don't want to have that sentiment, um, but it was weird to hear somebody say it. And at the same time, it was somewhat comforting and said, geez, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. I've, I've got this house. My kids are going to college, mm-hmm. whatever it is. And it was somewhat comforting to hear them say that where he didn't have to, you know, fret it. He wasn't biting his fingernails off going, geez, you know, if this happens, I, I'm dead. Uh, yeah. You know, so it, it was, you know, Mike, I can tell you, as someone who, you know, goes to Vegas more than the average Joe, you know, when I go to Caesars or someplace, I want to play craps, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to the table where the four or five young kids are screaming and yelling every time they hit a roll. I'm going to the table with all the old dudes with their heads down that aren't saying a word. The reason's because they're doing fine and they ain't advertising it and walking up there, you're going to see where the money's getting made. I think what we see in the card industry is a whole bunch of the of the veterans, the big veterans in the hobby, and I saw this at National. It's 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 heydays for them. They're making a lot of money, and they ain't saying a damn word about it. A because they've been through the tough times, so they're careful. They're like farmers, right? You, you know, you have great crops, and you have you have droughts, and you got to be you got to save the great crops because when the drought comes, you're going to need the money. So these guys are all saved up. Some of them, if the if the heyday continues until this thing switches and all hell breaks loose. They're going to go, okay, it ain't worth the time. They have a plan B and the plan B is to get out. I think the people like you who are lifers who don't have a plan B, you'll figure it out and there'll be fewer of you, but you're going to be out there. And so the, you know, the innovation comes from this kind of stuff and people will figure it out. There's going to be an avenue. It's going to be what that avenue looks like, et cetera, that we're, get, that we're going to see. And that's the, I don't know part. Uh, Brian Gray's closing speech at the uh, summit was, it, it's always like the, and unfortunately, it's always on Wednesday. It's on getaway day. Everybody's downstairs. They've got their luggage with them. They're, they're clock right. watching to make sure that they can still make their plane. And uh, Brian Gray's speech this year is basically pivot. And you know we've we've got this shop right here. You, you know we're not a we're not a, 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 a subway where I can only sell submarine sandwiches. Right. I can put whatever I want in here. Right. You know, at one point, uh, other stores it wasn't me, but it was Beanie Babies, it was Pogs, Pokemon, Magic right. the Gathering. There was always something that we could expand into and broaden our horizons, um, you know. And maybe it's bringing in more memorabilia, which is you know, right. available through fanatics, um, right. carrying more options in that regard. You know, TriStar, Leaf, they all make great packaged products with mini helmets with jerseys in it. And you know, I, I typically once I'm sorry, I'm looking at my shelf. Once I go through those products, I'm, I'm typically done with them because there's going to be another similar release down the road. And maybe right. it's a matter of refocusing it and, and bringing that in and and so right. it's more regularly stocked. Um, right. You know, the, the nice thing is card shops were supposed to be get put out of business by, and, and it's a yeah. long list, by yeah. card shows, eBay, Blowout, David Adams, Steel City. Amazon, um, the internet, all these things were supposed to put you out of business and you're still here. Right. So every time I hear the card shops are going out of business, it's always, right. you know, okay, great. It was, ain't found a way to kill me yet. Um, yeah, this right. one has me a little bit, different because it's yeah. it's the control side um and and definitely seeing some changes you know expected to see some changes there but we're seeing changes already we've seen the price of bowman in five years uh more than double close to triple um and, and you know it's that it's a weird moment you're like okay there's the email we can now order 2022 bowman oh crud it costs this much more oh but i can get seven cases buy it and it 
And uh, at the same time, you're like, wait a second. I just, I just did something that's really awkward for me to pay that much more, but you know, what choice do you have? So we, we've had that put to us before um, we've had, you know, costs rise, not just from the manufacturer level, we're having it rise from uh, the distributor level as well. Uh, I just paid was it 485 to restock um, absolute the day of release. Mm-hmm. Somebody wanted a case. And you know, one of the things you do as a shop is if you break even on a restock product, it's a good thing from the standpoint of I made no money on it, but that respend allows me to right. um, you get a secondary benefit in terms of access. Yep. Absolutely. I'm able to take care of a collector, which is the most important thing. But beyond that, I'm able to uh, hopefully lead to greater allocations down the road. Yeah. So um, you know, we, we, we pivot. We're, we're good at what we do. And unlike Subway, you can't sell a, you know, you can't sell a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, even if you want to. We can basically put anything we want to on our shelves here. Right. Um, so we've got, sorry, I had to hit record on college game day because I have to see Lee Corso do his thing. Give me one second. All right. I gotta, and it's Michigan, Michigan State. So I got to see the anger and the violence when he picks Michigan to beat Michigan State today in East, East uh, Lansing. So, um, there you yeah. Go. So, I, you know, the I don't know is big. I, I do think it's going to be innovation. I, now, let's let's think a different way. That's that's 2026. What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen with Panini and Pops? In the meantime, you know, I've heard everything from, well, they're going to flush their guns. They're going to overproduce all the common shit and they're going to go full bore with everything they can possibly do to get as much money in the pocket as they can. That might hurt pricing a little bit, but you'll have a lot more access to product to they're going to probably try to they're going to try to kill it. They're going to sell off the brands. You know, what do you think's playing out and how what are you seeing so far that that's like a lead indicator in that? Again, they, well, you know, for the next year, their plans were already in place. There's not a whole lot they can do about that. I, I don't think that they can make more than they're making right now. Um, <laughs> part of it is, well, and, and not to say they're not to say they're overproducing, <clears throat> but but you've got two factors. You've got availability of paper, yeah. um, and then you beyond that, you also have printing time. I, I mean, yeah. I don't. For all I know, that in Allen, Texas, they're going two four seven, wishing that there was an eighth day in the week. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't I don't know what what else they can do right. other than um, obviously as they've done in the last week redirect where product is going right. and, and and do more with their own online component. Yeah. I mean every box that they sell direct to end users, they're making that much more on than selling it wholesale yeah. or, or or to hobby shops. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more of that happening. But Benini can't just double up the amount of of. Right. prism that they make because every single box equates to two autographs now what they can do is they can cut it down to one autograph a box right i, I right. hope we don't do that i mean football right. prism for those of you who've been at it for a while used to be three autographs a box it's now two and that that move hey, right. came and i don't remember pitchforks and uh, torches going on so if it goes to one what do you do at that point do you simply say no 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 i will not buy your product that product's still going to get bought it may affect what it sells for in the secondary market because it affects less because it goes for less but that secondary market isn't the greatest concern for Panini these days. Obviously, they want their product to represent well. They don't want something going below cost because that's not a great sign and it negatively affects their partners, hobby shops. It affects uh, retail interest at that level. But I can't imagine we're going to see that for some time. Although, you know, then again, a year and a half ago, I was the one who said sell, sell, sell because we <laughs> get as much as you can because sports have stopped and, and you know, <laughs> we, things are going to change. Yeah, and you know, we we kind of predicted it plus minus that it would there would be a there'd be some increased activity in the hobby, and it, it was beyond what we expected. But you know, kind of saw it happen, and you know, it's interesting. I I wonder if what'll happen is something where Panini will start playing the game of I'll call it a modified hobby type product. It's, I call it hobby retail, where it's with with products like Prism, where there's where the the value isn't necessarily the autos; it's the it's the it's the parallels, et cetera, where they can just crank up the mill and the parallels, et cetera, if they have the capacity and create a mid-tier product that's like, you know, call almost all the parallels but fewer autographs type thing. It's price pointed between the two um, service offerings and go. Um, you know, I I I think about this a lot about what's going to happen with distribution. And I if it was I know if Panini and Tops could do it, I think they were already going down the path of doing what fanatics was trying to do and trying to butt out the distributors 
But what I think happens when you get this announcement, they're not going to invest in themselves to create the distribution and the and the and the bandwidth they need internally to do what distributors do. They're just not going to do that now. So I think as much as I think they were going to head down that path, I think it'll be incremental type stuff. They won't go full bore. I think, you know, if I'm if I'm fanatics, I would buy every bit of data Panini has because their online Dutch auctions and public offerings and stuff. You talk about the best way of figuring out how to get the price right. That's your show. So if they're smart enough to do that, I think the opportunity is, is good for them. I think Panini's going to school right now, but again, they have the same problems everyone else does with access to talent and access to paper and there's not any more printing time. And, you know, if you're any of those guys, Tops Panini, you're not going to co-invest with a printer to go put more capacity in because it's got to pay off of, it has to pay off in five years. So think about what that means and whether it's worth it for them. And I doubt it. I mean, I wouldn't throw another dime down because it's a dime that's not in daddy owner's pocket, you know, at the time this rolls up. So it's a, it's a tough go for them. You, you brought up one facet in terms of changing it out in terms of uh, doing the watered down product. And I don't want to call it watered down, but uh, we've seen Bowman Chrome Light and Topps Chrome Light, which yeah. are released from Topps, right. where they're able to make more product without the acquisition of more assets Correct. in terms of autographs. Simply like, as you said, offering a different parallel that's exclusive to those products. And if you look at my shelves, obviously you can't see them all. We have neither Bowman Chrome Light or Topps Chrome Light on our shelves. They were incredibly well-received products in spite of not offering an autograph or two autographs right. per box. So yeah. uh, we're, I guess we're starting to see some of that. Um, who, who knows? Who knows what else they'll do? I mean, I'm, I, at first I was a little shocked by those products. I still bought them all. And uh, I, I guess at this point, I'm certainly glad I did. Uh, quick, quick note, got about four minutes before we pop the shop on a Saturday. Yep. Yep. What, what else do you want to bang out? So I think we've banged out what we need to bang out for the day. Um, what, just real quickly before we wrap up, what are you looking forward to the next, um, I'm guessing we'll get together within a month or so. So within the next 30 days, what are you looking forward to in the hobby? Um, wow, great question. Well, we'll be close to holiday sales at that point. Um, I went into a Target the other day, and, and, and no, I didn't look at the sport. I, okay, fine. I looked at the sports card aisle because I wanted to see what it looked like. But one of the things I noticed is that the shelves, it wasn't quite like we envisioned every store in Russia in the in the 1980s looking like, um, but there were a lot lot less teeth. Yeah. There's a few more gaps. Uh, in the, I'm not a video. I don't play a lot of video games, but I looked at the video game section at Target, and there were a ton of gaps in terms of play mm -hmm. games available. Um, and I'm looking at a hobby shop right now where we are stocked. And I think we've got, oh gosh, it's somewhere that, I think it's 12 baseball offerings coming out before the end of the year. Products have been pushed back so far. So if, if assuming they all hit, even if they don't, I'm, I'm still stocked. My shop is, and we're ready to help people out for the holidays. Um, but I think that's going to be an interesting thing is which direction the market goes. You hear about all the shipping ships being, you know, docked yeah. outside the, where, where product can't come inside. Um, and and I, I think it's going to be really interesting. I expect it to be a solid Christmas holiday season to begin with. Um, but this year, you know, without as many options coupled with sports cards being the gift to give, this might it's going to be a very interesting year uh, for hobby shops come come this holiday season. Uh, yeah, again, so what I expect do you see in terms of shipping, Mike? You know, shipping's been a problem for everybody. Is is there, are you seeing it really show up? And again, you can eat, if you're sitting where you are, you don't know the difference between. Uh, a manufacturer having a problem with paper or printing or anything. It's just you have delays in release. Are you seeing release day gaps between release day and when you get your product that you didn't see hit previously? Or how's that playing out? We're not seeing release day gaps. We're seeing affected release dates. So they're getting changed uh, for the first time ever. Now, I've had, uh, we just had yesterday, Tops um, update jumbos arrive, uh, the, the product released yesterday. And for the first time ever, we did not have jumbos and hobby on the same day. We anticipated seeing jumbos late. I'm sorry, uh, jumbos arrived. We did not get the hobby product, and and now it's expected to be here next Wednesday. I wish it had been done backwards. The jumbo sells so much easier than the uh, than the hobby product. Uh, right. Oh my god, it would have been so crazy awesome if that had happened the opposite way. My guess is come Tuesday, Wednesday, when when the regulars arrive, we'll probably be out of jumbos, and we'll have right. more people looking for them instead. Of, and we we probably have 12 cases to start with. Um, which gives you an idea how popular the product is. Um, 
So that's one thing we're expecting. I mean, the reason we have 12 products coming out for baseball, I believe, before the end of the year is so many products have been slotted backwards. They've been pushed back on the schedule. Yeah. And I don't know the pressure that manufacturers have to have things out by December 31st. As a as a as more of a corporate guy, you see things on that side. Right. We, right. We, I just run with the ball when it's handed to me. Um, so yeah. I, I don't know whether they have to have it on to, to count it as a, a, as a sale from this year. I, I don't know the, the accounting that goes with that. Yeah. My guess is if they're selling it to you, it's either shipped from them or shipped to you. And if it's when you get it, they'll want to get it out. If it's when they ship it out, they won't care because it's yours from the time the truck leaves. So it depends on how the deal is. I'm just glad it doesn't come from China. <laughs> I'm no, just, yeah. yeah. I'm elated. We we have two things to be blessed for is that uh, we haven't had a tornado strike out in Texas as I completely jinxed the entire industry. And also that sports cards don't come from China because that would be just mighty annoying. Well, you know, what's amazing is this is one of those things. If you know, again, I this is a little bit of a tangent, but we'll get back to wrapping up here. Um, you know, China is an interesting place because they, in a lot of ways they've said we're not going to invest in innovation. We're just going to go figure out everyone else's stuff and then go make it ourselves. And it's interesting, other than these counterfeit holders for cards, there's not a counterfeit card market of massive significance that sits in China that's flooding the market the other direction. Or if it is, no one's figured it out yet. So right. it's an interesting dynamic that, you know, it's, it's, it's like art, right? Counterfeit art doesn't really get this, that either. And so I think there's a value to the fact that it's, they're unique and they're there. I'm not saying it's not possible for somebody to open a press in China and start cranking out prisms and flood the market and screw it all up. But, you know, we haven't seen it. And it's interesting that that's just something that's been untouched um, in China. Maybe what? Xi is a big collector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I saw I saw John Cena's apology when he said anything the other week. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> So it's a big market and a lot of people there um, and they're big lovers of cards, as I can tell you from my own shipping of sales I've had. So um, anyway, so that, let's, let's go ahead and wrap up. I know you're going to open the shop and I got to go see Lee Corso put on a, put on a uh, mascot head. So thank you for getting back together. It's been a little while off. I'm sure we'll get into a pretty regular cadence and um, thank you everybody for uh, coming in and listening to us here in the card shop. Have a good one. 